Okay, we'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. Uh, if you will, we'll all stand in pledge of allegiance to the flag. Application by Councilman Bond. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and unto the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we bow our heads, please? Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to thee tonight to say thank you. Thank you for all the beautiful and miracle things that you've done for us here in this town of Edenton. Bless this council as it goes about its business to take care of our dearly beloved town. We might not at all times agree on all situations, but help us to come to a just understanding about that situation. Bless the individuals that live within this sweet town. Bless us, keep us in good harmony and good judgment. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Vaughn. Okay, at this time we'll have the approval of the minutes for our special meeting of September the 20th, uh, 23 and November the 27th, 2023, the regular meeting of November the 14th, and our closed session meeting of November the 14th of 2023. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any comments? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, at this time we'll have a special presentation for our local Christmas artist acknowledgement, Chess Chesson. You. Yeah. You're up. <laughs> High quarters. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Town Council, people of Edenton. Um, I'm here on behalf of Destination Downtown Edenton, just just the director. Um, formally acknowledge and thank uh, Brian Vasquez for all the hard work he's done as an intern for us for the past few months. Um, I want to reach out to Ms. Sonia Reinhardt, the principal of Johnny Homes, asking for a potential intern to help us with any marketing or things like that. And she sent Brian our way. And uh, right off the bat, you know, we were talking about uh, these windows that I want to paint them to be lit up like a Christmas tree with excitement. <laughs> uh, all the fun intended. Um, what he could do, and I just said, I just gave him the part of the and said, Tell me what you need, and, and knock it out. And uh, I think, as everyone has seen, he did a great job, and we're thrilled that he was working with us and made it into beautiful and just in time for the candlelight tour. So I just thank y'all, and thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Young man, we would like to, as a town of Eden, thank you for the beautiful job you did. I've heard a lot of positive comments about it. You did a fantastic job, and you got you got a lot to look forward to in your future. Thank you very much. Okay, we have another uh, special presentation, the Road Diet Traffic Study Overview by Corey and D uh, Dwayne Wheaton. Um, it's been a while. I'm going to do it this way. Well, we wanted to try to provide the uh, council with a general update from the public hearing. And um, so before that, Delaney and I had been working on trying to gather some information just as kind of a general overview to share with council, to share with the general public. But we also wanted to particularly focus on um, um, some of the concerns and comments that folks had, had brought to light. And during this presentation, we hope to try to address some specifics around Edenton and how this project could or could, could not impact us. Um, so, Tammy, if you want to. So, just a, a general sense of overview for what a road diet is. Um, but uh, when we look at uh, North Broad Street here, if you looked at the uh, photo on the left, you can see that this is a typical four lane. You see these. Um, in multiple areas throughout the state. And one of the things that had been brought to light in the um, 2023 road diet plan that we um, received from NCDOT was um, the idea of these road diets and how 
the different variabilities of those could impact you know current layouts of roads, whether it's a four lane, a five lane, a three lane, what that may be. And so when we well, we wanted to clarify exactly what um, changes we would see here and what had been considered. And so if you look. You can see a center turn lane, the two north and south bound uh, travel lanes, as well as the two um, bike lanes um, just off to the right. So one thing we wanted to share with the general public here um, for Broad Street, a lot of folks had asked about the um, number of travel uh, per vehicles, the annual average daily traffic here ranges anywhere from about 6,800 to 7,300. Um, and one thing we also wanted to share with the general public, um, this original diagram that had been posted. Um, it's just a touch long. Uh, we had a conversation back with NCDOT, and the proposal was actually to get us um, to the East Hicks section, which is your exit now currently for the high school. So the section that you see um, between the armory, the fire station, and Dairy Queen and Walgreens, that's uh, something not consider as part of this proposal. Next slide. So one of the things we want to look at is to try to find some areas where these type of um, very similar projects have taken place. Um, we were able to find some information um, uh, around the city of Elkin, which we found to be our, our most similar peer when we talk about size of the town, we talk about the volume. Um, I actually had a chance to speak to the town manager um, for Elkin this past week before we sent this uh, packet out um, and to try to get an idea of the, um, you know, the process for them and they said the public engagement piece was, was always important and so as much information as we can share to bring back to the general public we wanted to do but when we look at these projects and you look at the flows, uh, although uh, one section is just you know, a touch higher than what we have but it was the one that we were able to find that was most, most similar to Edenton. When we talk about ones within our area that folks may have experienced, um, we were able to find a project that had been completed on the 264 extension or Town Road 5th Street um, within Washington. Um, this is a very similar project that the folks from Division 2 had done. Um, next slide, Penny. Um, and another one we talk about kind of getting to areas that are really high traffic where these things had worked. Um, we were actually surprised to find one that had happened in Raleigh, um, just in front of NC State's campus, which as you can see, significantly higher traffic volume than most of these small towns. But what was curious about this is that it had been implemented long enough that there was actually some data to show um, around this particular project. And um, as you can see here, um, some of the data that we were able to find on that were the number of crashes that had decreased by 23% and what they had seen in private and public investment along this corridor after implementing a project like this. Next slide. So one of the things we wanted to talk about was congestion. So one common approach in road dots is to reduce the number of travel lanes for uh, example a road that originally had four lanes may reduce to two with a center turn lane. This reduction in the number of lanes uh, can have traffic calming effects and discourage aggressive driving, ultimately leading to a smoother traffic flow. Um, what we've also found is, is that road dots are often implemented uh, with safety in mind. Now, I think that's the main idea for the council here to consider was the safety aspect. Um, and we'll go into a little bit of Edenton specific um, crash and speed numbers and on this next slide. But um, this, all this information we we're able to get from the Federal Highway Administration on things that are commonly considered when you bring a project like this um, to the table during a paving project. And what they shared is that um, roads with less than 20,000 vehicles per day, uh, four to three lane conversions will not worsen congestion, but in fact, um, the safety improvements that they've seen around these uh, three-lane roads become uh, much safer because the left turns are shifted into the center lane, allowing traffic to flow more freely, um, which in turn causes the road to be utilized a lot more efficient. Next slide. Um, also, we tried to find information around 
um, uh, what we saw in speed reduction and, and the speed reduction does impact the number of lanes and impl implements traffic calming measures. Road dice can contribute to lower vehicle speeds. Uh, one of the things we tried to find was a, uh, a North Carolina based project that had some data to show um, and if you know how busy the, the intersection of 40 and 15501 is, um, the um, Public Works and Public Transportation Department for the City of Durham had actually really analyzed what they were seeing there where they had implemented this and they had found that um, routinely travel was 10 to 15 miles per hour posted or faster than the posted 35 mile per hour speed limit um, and further projection has showed that 80% um, of the cars that traveled within the project area that they considered were in fact speeding. Um, next slide. Um, when we look at wrecks and crashes, one of the things that we were able to find, um, particularly from the federal level as well as a um, statewide level, is that the Federal Highway Administration does estimate a reduction of 20 to 50 percent in crashes. And we were able to find that the town of Hickory we were able to confirm these numbers where they saw annually anywhere from 19 to 47 percent um, reduction in the number of crashes that they had in a project that they had um, just completed within the last few years. Next. So when we look about, when we look at some of the Edenton police data, we really wanted to try to share with the public what this means uh, for Edenton, uh, particularly for us. When you look at the intersections between Virginia Road and Queen Street. Um, along Broad Street, um, the majority of the um, accidents that PD was able to data log, if you see there's, there were roughly three in the last five years at North Broad and Virginia Road. There were five at North Broad and West Queen Street. And between Virginia Road and West slash East Queen Street, there were roughly 44 crashes. This makes up 84% of the 52 wrecks that we've saw in the last five years. So if you apply that same percent reduction um, to actual Edenton numbers, you could estimate anywhere from, you know, four crashes a year to just under three. Um, and when we talk about movement violations, one of the things we wanted to try to include here, we looked at the same time period from January 1st of 2019 um, for any moving violations so we can associated with speed or accidents. Um, when you look at the number of citations that, have, that were issued along Broad Street, there were roughly 493. Um, 83 of these were either for unsafe movement, speeding, or failure to reduce speed. Um, unsafe movement typically um, is associated with some type of side swipe or rear end collision, um, and speeding, of course, is speeding. Um, but failure to reduce speed is oftentimes a rear-end collision. And so I spoke with the chief about that to try to get a better understanding of these charges. When we look at warning citations, there were roughly 686 that have been given out since 2019, of which 36 were, again, unsafe movement, speeding, failure to reduce speed, uh, or left of center. Um, so when we look at a five-year period, we're talking about, um, in addition to the actual wrecks that were given, are shown above when you consider that information and you also consider the 100 plus uh, moving violations that could have been a wreck. I mean, that's also something to consider that would be a reduction as we were to, you know, calm that traffic, have that center turn lane, you would eliminate the um, failure to reduce speed uh, incidents as well as the unsafe movements that are typically associated with the left hand turn. Next. Um, one of the things that we really wanted to encourage and really want to get a better understanding is is that the walkability accessibility I know that um, Chesh had shared some of the information about our downtown area um, at the public hearing um, we really wanted to kind of expand some opportunity there where we have really scored high in a very walkable very accessible town um, you know, this is something that we've seen in, with DOT when you look at some of the safety implements that they've put in at crosswalks, particularly with the, uh, the bump maps that are really geared for, um, you know, folks who may have disabilities to, to find their way. Um, but particularly for us, you know, we wanted to see how we could increase our scores 
Um, and so one of the things that we found that these road dots often involve relocating um, space for bike lanes and pedestrian facilities. Um, alternative modes of transportation such as biking and walking road dots can reduce the number of vehicles on the roads during peak hours, thus decre decre decreasing congestion. Next slide. So one of the things we really wanted to share here was really looking to some of the financial responsibility. We talked about healthcare savings, people getting more active, getting out there. That's something that, that um, some of the studies we've seen from the Federal Highway Administration has shared. Uh, the improved accessibility, reduction in asphalt uh, incidents, um, which you know relate to insurance costs and then an overall enhanced livability. Uh, keep going. So one thing we, that we wanted to share with the general public, you know, the financial responsibility piece of this was important to us. And if you remember looking back at the um, road diet plan that was presented by NCDOT back in the spring, um, there were three particular projects in there that were geared towards bike and pedestrian improvements. Um, currently, the uh, bike ped plan estimated that this type of project would be $2.8 million um, for North Broad Street to go from Queen Street up into uh, Paradise Road. Um, if you look at some of the alternatives that were con uh, considered or suggested by the general public when we talk about like a multi-use path or we talk about um, creating a biking trail or something along those lines, um, the bike ped plan also included a multi-use path for West Queen Street, which is roughly $5.5 million. Um, that would get you from the Westover um, general store basically back to town. Um, and then when we also look at uh, more of a bike trail and the abandoned railway, railway that was proposed, we're talking about roughly 2.8, I guess my three minutes ago, <laughs> 2.8 million <laughs> to, to do that. And so one of the things that we had considered when, when we at least approached DOT about this was try to get a better understanding because those are really big dollar um, numbers for any of the paths um, to move forward, whether it's Broad Street, Queen Street, or some of the abandoned railways. And one thing we wanted to share with the general public is that the consideration of this um, financially was something to consider because we had the opportunity to implement a plan um, for Broad Street, uh, anywhere from uh, 22 to about 45,000 dollars. So when you look at a 2.8 million dollar project in the future for the state and the bike ped plan, and then you you look at this simply being a unit change for a current contract that's in place with simply a striking unit price adjustment. Um, so when we talk about financial responsibility, what do we wanted to to make sure is that something like this were considered, you really wanted to make sure the timing was right or, or you spend $2.8 million to do something similar. So this is one of the things we wanted to share. Um, next slide. So one thing that we wanted to talk about specifically tonight was try to help address some of the public hearing concerns. We saw a lot of this on our social media accounts as well. Uh, public safety um, uh, congestion what we found is that fire and EMS would able to be able to utilize the dedicated turn lane to avoid um, vehicles that cannot move over. Typically, if someone is beside them and they're not able to move over, that the fire and EMS would be able to do that. And vehicles could simply merge into that six-foot bike lane, so it would almost <coughs> create a space for them to, to get, a, get out of the way and, and for emergency vehicles to be able to come around. Um, when we talk about parking, one of the things that we're really trying to consider here is um, the original conversation started because of parking. And we had talked with DOT about the consideration of parking being part of the Broad Street paving project. But we didn't have enough space for that. But um, some of the discussion we've had, we still would like to honor any historic parking that we have. I know that representatives, uh, some folks had came in and, and, and talked about some of the on-street parking whether it was at the Catholic Church or near the high school or near the steamers field or somewhere in that area where we do see that and by you know creating this this bike lane we still feel like there would be sufficient space for individuals to simply move over a foot and drive around with this new turn lane so we wanted to honor that we didn't want to change that 
When we look at speeding to give folks an idea of time and congestion, um, 42 miles per hour down Broad Street versus 35 miles per hour is a reduction of 11 seconds. So to go from the high school to Queen Street would increase by roughly 11 seconds. Whereas putting in a speed limit of say 25, um, that would increase the travel time by roughly 22 seconds. So when you think about how much time it's taking to get north or southbound, um, this 35 mile per hour speed that we have now, um, you know, you're only talking about 11 seconds. So it's, it's a very minor change for folks. Um, we think about the truck traffic. We heard a lot of folks uh, uh, worries about truck traffic on Broad Street. And one of the things that we had had a discussion with DOT about was trying to move the GPS navigation from um, MLK to Virginia Road or Paradise and to also look at consider um, Coke Avenue as a dedicated truck route to avoid that downtown traffic that, that PD has to deal with a lot that misses that turn because it says the shortest way is to go by the cotton mill. Um, so one of the things that we've also asked is could we consider that? Could we also consider having Coke Avenue as our dedicated truck route to avoid that Broad Street, Church Street kind of congestion that we've all experienced from having to back up while someone's turning at the post office. So if we send them north to Coke Avenue and, and around to the 32-37 um, highway, that, that would avoid that. So that's one thing we've also tried to push to get to. And the last thing, uh, we really want to make sure from the school bus traffic safety, uh, we want to work with the school system. If there are any stops along Broad Street that either a uh, bike uh, or pedestrian could cause, um, we've already had some conversations with the school system. We want to try to be a good neighbor and make sure that we can um, work with them on really kind of creating these preferred routes to avoid any potential problems that they could have. Any questions from the council? So, if, if, we, if the speed limit gets reduced, does that sort of organically affect Google Maps so that you know, they, they don't take you through areas with 25 mile an hour zones? I mean, because I know that sometimes I'll be going somewhere and it doesn't take you necessarily to know the direct route, it takes you to the route it thinks is fast. It depends. It's always the answer. Um, the one key thing we did find out is that the um, GPS travel is based on passenger vehicles. So one thing that's not built into the way the, the way the routes are designed, it doesn't, it can't tell the difference between a 20 foot long car or pickup truck versus a you know, 48 foot long tra uh, tractor trailer. So that's really a problem. I think there's some things we can do to kind of help with that, but it's all based around the passenger vehicle for travel distances. With the possible rerouting of uh, tractor trailers happen prior to uh, resurfacing the road? I think so. Considering um, we've got time to navigate through this with DOT, I think that could be uh, something that we could go ahead and start on preliminarily to start getting those AADT numbers down as we go forward. Um, and I've got some concerns on some of our smaller routes in North Eaton that are already too small that I think we could simply correct with some weight reductions and enforcement to try to, to get folks to utilize um, the Coke Avenue route anyway. Gotcha. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, next we'll have public comments, and remember that public comments are limited to three minutes, and we will not be taking questions tonight uh, in the essence of time, so. Uh, all right, our first one is Todd and Beverly Dudley from Raleigh. <laughs> 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 Sign the wrong sheet. Sorry <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we should do a roll call real quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> George, did you want to say <laughs> uh, well, I didn't really have a this fall, but I appreciate all the work about this main street. But I think you ought to fix all the other roads in town before you do that part. Well, that is not the town street. That is the state. Broad Street belongs to the state, so they're taking care of that. That's old 17, if you recall. So the state will be taking care of that in Greenville. Mm -hmm. So they're both state street. Next is John Mitchell. Mr. Mayor, I would like to simply say a word of thanks to those who are current office holders, and those who will be office holders in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, it requires a great deal of effort Thank you. Okay, next is John Grant. Community Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is John Grant. I live at 412 East Queen Street. My wife and I also own the building at 103 uh, East King, where she is operating business. Uh, I had two things I want to say tonight. Again, as I said last month, I want to thank the Mayor and Council and the new Council members for all the work they do in the town. And I would hope that the new Council members would work with the current council members to continue to hold Saga responsible for the Hinton Hotel. I know that there's been a little bit of movement there. I know that the uh, town enforcement, code enforcement company that you all hired has been looking at the hotel in regards to uh, code violations as well as other businesses in town that need to be fixed up. So I just hope that you would continue to hold their feet to the fire and not grant them any more uh, leeway. Uh, in regards to the Broad Street plan, I spoke at the public hearing. I am against it. I think it needs to be looked at much more seriously. And I think that we need to give time to ensure that the truck movement is actually changed. I think we need to do a current study since the study, from my understanding, was done in 2021 when traffic was a lot slower and a lot less. I think crosswalks and speed limit reduction, in addition to those signs that they can put up showing how fast you're going, might help curtail the speeding and teach people to speed for that area uh, rather than putting in bike paths and condensing the lanes any further. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next is Alan Swanner. Good evening. <coughs> Excuse me. Good evening. My name is Alan Swanner. I live here in town. Uh, concerning the Brawl Street, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I think it's foolish for the town as a whole. <laughs> Uh, I was a fireman for almost 44 years here. 16 and a half years as a full-time fireman, I drove a fire truck for 16 and a half years. And every shift. Uh, the fireman goes down Broad Street. The turn lane, they said, could be used. But the fireman uses a turn lane that's at his own risk. If there's any accident, he's the one that's going to get the ticket, uh, pay the consequences, lose his job. Uh, I've been to many defensive driving, driving classes as a fireman, and we are taught to never go through red lights without stopping. And then if you proceed through, you still hit somebody, it's your fault. So the turn lane will do the fire department no good. And you say, you mentioned something about 22 seconds. All right, if you get behind an elderly person like myself who just likes to ride and look, it could be 45 seconds. And uh, as some of you know, because I've been to some of your houses, if you have a fire, 45 seconds don't sound like much. It can mean the difference between life and death. It can mean the difference between losing one bedroom or losing half your house. Uh, it's a very dangerous situation. I don't want to see us go back to the 50s where we only had 
yeah. one lane in each direction. Uh, I think it'd be a very serious mistake for the time. Uh, thank you for the listening. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, next is Gary Swanner. <coughs> thank you, Chair. Last meeting, speaking on behalf of the Cross Street as well as uh, the Morgan Park issues, but I'm just going to speak brief up on the Cross Street again. Uh, one thing I didn't I fail to mention in my speech the last time: Cross Street is not just like any other Cross Street in any other town in North Carolina or anywhere else. Uh, it's a main street. We think of it as a main street, but trying to uh, slow it down even further than what it is puts it at a crawl street. You seem to forget that crawl street is, is a concurrence of two major arteries in northeastern North Carolina converging. Highway 17 and Highway 32 cover opposite directions, but that one mile stretch is both uh, 17 and 32 combined. It's made for the movement of vehicular traffic and commerce. It's not made as a residential street until they designate some other uh, roads around to uh, get those uh, main arteries uh, out of Main Street. It's going to be what it is. So it's there mainly to move the traffic. Uh, so slowing it down is not a good idea uh, as, as far as what the street, the roads are, are designed for. Uh, the bike path, I know you're trying to, to get it down too, so you put a bike path in. Every street in Eaton has been a bike path ever since I've been here. It hasn't been in progress. Uh, just to, to, to slow traffic down and bring it down to two lanes to get a bike path is, uh, I think, is ridiculous. If you go down one mile, where are you going? You're going back onto the streets. So, you know, I think that's a foolish idea. Some places, uh, I see that they uh, designate with a marker on the street that as a bike travel, that might be... Uh, motors to pay attention to that a little bit and be more cognitive to any bikers that's going down the street. But the roadway is not big enough to keep a four lane having a bike path. We know that. So uh, I'm against a change it. I think it should stay four lane as it is to make it easier for people getting in down, up and down the street as well as getting in and out of the side street. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, next is Trevor Miles. Street. I'll be speaking on the Granville four-way stop and the Broad Street diet plan. Uh, as far as the Granville four-way stop, I support it. I think it makes sense. I don't see any issues with it. As to the Broad Street diet, I believe it makes sense. I do support it for the most part, but I think it would make sense to also cro uh, stripe out where the crosswalks are across Broad Street. That's all. Thank you, sir. All right, next is Susan Ingalls. Good evening, Susan Ingalls, 101 East Water Street, here to thank you for this road diet plan. You have uh, paid, uh, made a lot of study and paid a lot of attention to the relative costs of uh, fulfilling your commitment to increasing walkability and bikeability in our town, and as a cyclist and a pedestrian, I really, really appreciate that. I walked up Broad Street today and noticed how much better it will be when the traffic is slower and when there's that margin for bicycles. And today, I would have been on my bicycle if it had been safe on Broad Street today. So I want to thank you for this plan that I think is well considered and is making good use of tax dollars and of our relationship with the state. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And that ends our public comment. And at this time, we'll move into our committee reports. And the first is the administrative committee, and that's chaired by incoming mayor, Mr. High. Thank you, Mayor Stallings. Um, the Administrative Committee has two agenda items which require uh, action tonight. The uh, first action item is uh, 
regarding our Human Relations Commission. Uh, each year they provide us an update on their initiatives for the coming year and they have provided us that. Uh, they also have requested that we appoint two alternates, Cynthia Herlong and Dr. Emma Bonner as full uh, uh, members of that commission. The administrative committee at our last meeting uh, moved this to full council with the recommendation that we approve both of those things and as such I make a motion that we approve it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mayor, the next item for action is the amendment to our electric pole service agreement with Roanoke Connect. Um, the proposed amendment comes to us um, with the recommendation uh, of the administration that we approve the amend amendment. Uh, currently, we charge Roanoke Connect uh, seven or eight dollars per pole uh, to lease uh, the space on our poles. The requested amendment would uh, take that down to zero, and anytime we hear about loss of revenue or we hear about somebody getting something free, uh, it automatically concerns us, but we will in exchange get um, services that far exceed any loss of revenue. So that comes uh, to us from administration with the recommendation that we approve it. At our last uh, meeting, the administrative committee uh, did move that to full council <laughs> with the recommendation that we do approve it. And as such, I'll put that in the form of a motion also. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mayor Stallings, that completes our business. Okay, next is the Public Works Committee, and that's chaired by Councilman Miller. Mayor, we have uh, three traffic-related issues tonight that we'll take action on. Uh, at our November 27th committee meeting, we discussed the proposed road design changes to the Broad Street Corridor from Church Street intersection to the Virginia Road intersection in conjunction with the upcoming DOT road resurfacing project. This proposal included reducing the existing four traffic lanes to two lanes, creating a turn lane and establishing two bike paths. Mayor, the Public Works Committee recommends to the full council the tabling of any decision at this time on the Broad Street Road Diet Project. The Public Works Committee is of the opinion the council needs some additional time to digest, study, and investigate the risks and benefits associated with the proposed uh, road design changes. Therefore, I make a motion to table any decision on the Broad Street Road Diet proposal at this time. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. May our second item, uh, four-way stop at the Granville Street, West Albemarle, and MLK Avenue. Again, at our November 27th committee meeting, we discussed the proposal of placing a four-way stop with solar-powered blinking red lights at the intersection of Granville Street, West Albemarle, and MLK Avenue in conjunction with the upcoming NCDOT Granville Street Road resurfacing project. This change was proposed because the general public was interested in slowing down traffic in an effort to avoid repeated auto accidents at this particular intersection. However, in an attempt to gather additional citizen input on the four-way stop issue and because of time constraints of tonight's reorganizational meeting, I make a motion to table any further discussion on the four-way stop issue at this time and hopefully we can revisit this issue in the very near future. I don't think we need to vote on that. No. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Third, uh, Terry Avenue and uh, Robin Lane uh, four-way stop. At our November 27th meeting, we heard how some residents living in the neighborhood were, were frustrated with the speed bump solution of slowing traffic between West Queen and Robin Lane along Terry Avenue. In place of speed bumps, a longer-term solution to the problem would be the place in a before-way stop at the Terry Avenue Robin Lane intersection. However, in an attempt to look further into other traffic safety options um, and because of their strengths of, of tonight's reorganization meeting, if this does take a while, I make a motion to table any further discussion at, the, uh, at this particular four-way stop. Okay. We don't need to vote okay. on that. Motion. Okay. 
Okay. And that, that concludes Public Works. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, now we'll move on to new business, and we have a response letter for the LGC for the Town of Eden's 22-23 uh, audit. Uh, Mayor, only thing to add here is that um, if you remember, we did have the audit presentation and the general statutes require that we send a response letter back within 60 days. Um, Virginia and I have worked through this. Uh, we feel like the um, response letter that we have sufficient um, for any of the information. Um, of course, no findings, but just responses. Um, and we would, we would need to take action on this tonight um, to get that and meet our deadline. And Corey, um, we had a clean audit. Yes. We had a did. clean audit and this is just a statutorily required response. Yes, that's, that's correct. correct. That's it. Need a motion. Yeah. Motion. Your motion. Yeah. 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 A okay. second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just congratulations. Yeah. To Virginia. Virginia. She's yeah. here. Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, the next is the bud a budget amendment for runway 119, pavement and lighting rehab. Uh, Mayor, um, the budget presented to budget amendment presented tonight is for $1,400. This is for the runway 119 paving and lighting rehab, and staff recommends that council approve the budget amendment as presented. Make a motion that we uh, approve yes. it as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And that completes our business at this point in time. And now I'm going to make a couple of remarks. This will be my last remarks. <laughs> uh, I just want to say a few words before I turn the gavel over to your new mayor, Mr. Hackney. Hi. Uh, this has been a wonderful experience to me and one that I will always treasure. To my fellow councilmen, thank you for the support that you have given me over the past four years and some of you even before that. We have disagreed at times and voted differently at times, but, we, but when the gavel struck and we went our separate ways, we were still friends and that's the way democracy works. To Elton, my mayor pro tem, I thank you for your support and fill it in for me in my absence. You've done a great job and I sincerely thank you for it. To all of you, thank you for your support and what you have done and everything and Godspeed to all of you. That's it. Yeah, I will get out of the way and let y'all. <laughs> he really wants to go. Um, at this time, um, I do want to introduce um, Judge Meager Harris. He's here with us tonight. Tammy um, and myself were able to get most of the things together. And um, Peter, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, first of all, let me just say that um, it's not often I get to participate in joyous occasions. So, uh, I'm excited to be here. You can get to my right here. Mayor Step by you can pass the gavel. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you, sir. Um, so we're going to begin with the administration of the oath of office for mayor. So, Mr. Pye, if you would please come up and anyone you have with you guy. and the Bible. Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws. Of North Carolina. Of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I, W. Hackney High Jr. And that I, W. Hackney High Jr. Do further solemnly swear. Do further solemnly swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As mayor for the town of Edenton, North Carolina. As mayor of the town of Edenton, North Carolina. 
So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. It seats warm. <laughs> Mr. Sellers. All right. Left hand of the Bible, raise your right if you repeat after me. I, Patrick Sellers. I, Patrick Sellers. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution. United States of America. Of the United States of America. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws. Of the state of North Carolina. Of the state of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. I, Patrick Sellers. I, Patrick Sellers. Do further solemnly swear. Do further solemnly swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As councilman of large. As councilman at large. Town of Eaton's in North Carolina. To the town of Eaton's in North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> Patrick, congratulations. Okay. Bob, congratulations. All right, uh, Mr. Dixon, if you would be that. I, Samuel Dixon. I, Samuel Dixon. Do 
solemnly swear. You solemnly swear that I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws of the State of North Carolina. Of the State of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. I, Senator Dixon. I, Senator Dixon. Do further solemnly swear. Do further solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge. Councilman of the Second Ward, as Councilman of the Second Ward for the town of Edenton, North Carolina. For the town of Edenton, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. The uh, next order of business is the election for the office of Mayor Pro Tem. At this time, I will open the floor for nominations. Since I've been on here the longest, I want to make this nomination. I'd like to re-elect Elton Bond for this position. I think he has done an amazing job. I think he's been a good friend and a great councilman, and even lucky to have people like Elton Bond. So I would put his name forward. Second. Uh, I second. certainly agree. We've got a uh, nomination and a second for Elton Bond for the position of Mayor Pro Tem. Do we have any other nominations from, from the floor? There appearing to be no other further nominations from the floor and with the motion and second, all in favor of appointing uh, Councilman Bond as our next Mayor Pro Tem. Aye. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Can you can say whatever <laughs> you want to. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Is that all you have to say? No, I would like to thank the uh, councilmen for their vote of confidence within me, and I want to thank you for asking me to be your mayor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I look forward to it. Yep. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yep. I hope to serve you any way I can. That's the my I understand. Thank I look all. forward to it. The next order of business that we have is the mayor's boards, commissions, and committee appointments. There's no action needed um, on this particular agenda item. We have circulated the list of mayor's appointments, and Corey and I will get together with each of you in the coming uh, weeks so that we can uh, get a good start for 2024 and discuss what the duties for those uh, particular uh, appointments are. The next matter, uh, agenda item that we have, does require uh, action, and that is the approval of roster of firemen. We do this each and every year, and Corey, is there anything that you want to add other than we just need to take a vote and approve the roster of our firemen? That's right, <coughs> nothing else. Okay. So move. Second. Okay, there's a, a motion and second to approve the uh, current roster of firemen. Uh, all in favor, please by, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The last uh, agenda item is items considered timely and important. And one thing that I would like to institute um, for the general public and those that are here for the first time, that is the time in our meeting that our councilmen can address things that they've heard out in the community as concerns or either individual concerns that they have. And what I'd like to do, just to keep it orderly uh, at each meeting, and I'm not putting any pressure on you, uh, Bob, but I would just like to start on the right-hand side for this meeting, and we go um, uh, down the line. Basically, in the next meeting, Aaron, will start with you, and that way we'll have a more orderly uh, presentation of items considered timely and important. So, Mr. Turner, it being your, your first meeting, do you have anything that you would like to uh, bring to the attention of council? I know I asked Corey uh, last week when I saw him about the Fairfield Inn. And I know people have asked me about that. And 
maybe we could update the information that you So we've actually reached out to the, um, the property owners. Um, they did confirm and they have two active projects going on uh, at this time and they're um, looking at a 2025 timeline. They do not want to have three projects going on at one time. Um, so we're hoping to see the finishing of what they're working on, at least one of those, so we can get started. Um, but they still are interested in the property and still have all intentions on um, constructing there. Will that require them to renew the uh, special use permit? Um, depending on the timing from mm -hmm. the last approval, anything beyond a year would allow would require them to come back to renew their permit. I think that's coming up, yep. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it should be getting close. Councilman Sellers? Nothing else. Councilman May? Uh, one thing, uh, is there any possible solution to opening up the uh, parking lot next to Cresswell Furniture? Anything going on there? Um, Chess and I have had some conversations with the property owner, uh, but I'm going to say no update at this time. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Bond? And one other change that um, I'm going to recommend to council in January is that when councilmen uh, bring up an issue um, that they consider timely and important, that we automatically have a report um, on that at the next uh, meeting, and that way things are not dropped through the cracks and the public and council can have regular updates on those uh, items. Councilman Dixon. Um, I just have a couple of comments. One is I think that we need all to thank the town staff and the people that, that participated in the, this past weekend uh, the town, I mean, it was, it was managed so well. There were, somebody said, 2,400 people here, which is about half the population of Edenton. And um, Corey and his team and the police and, the, you know, the, everybody just did a great job. Um, and I also just want to call out and um, thank Chess Chesson for all he's doing for our Main Street. Um, we had a full board meeting this morning. We have people participating, people are very excited about it, and um, we're just lucky to have somebody this caliber running this. I agree, thank you, Sambo. Councilman no, Costa. Okay. okay. Before we adjourn, I'd like to uh, make a few comments as we, we start uh, this new administration. Uh, one thing I'd like to invite uh, gathered friends and family and the general public to a reception in the very next room. We've got a meeting room uh, that many of you are not aware of, and we're going to have a small reception to honor Mayor Stallings. So I'd like to invite each and every one of you uh, to attend that uh, if you're so inclined. Um, before we adjourn, I would like to make a few uh, comments. First, I'm honored and humbled that the residents of Edenton have given me and elected me this position as mayor of Edenton, you have um, placed a tremendous amount of trust in me, and I can promise you that that trust will not be misplaced. Edenton's a unique place, and I think most of us realize that. And I can't tell you how excited I am to lead Edenton for the next four years into what I think is a very bright future. And when we talk about Edenton being special and being unique, I truly think we're on the verge of something, something truly, truly special with everything that we've got going here, and I cannot wait to see it all unfold for all of us. As I've grown older, I've realized that we all need each other. Uh, we need each other to get through this thing called life. We need, to need each other so that we can work together, and I mean that, together, to make Edenton be the very best that it can be. I pledge to you that I will lead Edenton in a positive, energetic, and unified manner that brings us all together because I truly believe that together we all win. As we make this transition from the previous administration to our newly constituted council, I would like to begin this administration with a prayer. If you're so inclined, please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for these people who are gathered here this evening, and we thank you for all the other blessings that you have given us, which are too numerous for us to count. Dear Lord, we also thank you for these council members who've had the courage to step forward into public service and into the limelight to lead our town. 
we ask that you send down upon this council and this mayor a spirit of wisdom, justice, and discernment so that we may serve in a way that is pleasing to you and in a way that promotes the well-being of all of our residents. Dear Lord, keep us ever mindful of the needs of others, particularly those who are less fortunate than us. As we move through the Christmas and holiday season, we pray for everyone a season of peace, joy, and goodwill among all. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. One of the favorite things we always like to hear, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thank you, brother. I'm going to need your help.